Final moments of calming instruction in the direction of Attila Banath from his coach. Into the blue corner, the compact figure of Arktem, Arktem Zakirov. Alexander Kamidov of Uzbekistan is the referee. And we are underway. 51 kilogram flyweight action in the second preliminary round is a contest between boxers from Hungary and the Russian Boxing Federation. The Southpaw, who has just got through with the left hand, but he took a shot in return, is Akhtem Zakirov, 23 years of age. Russia with a boxer in each of the 13 weight classes. His opponent, wearing red, who is gunning away with an uppercut, standing as the two men standing toe-to-toe -to -toe on top of the logo, spoken to by the referee about keeping their heads out of harm's way. The man in red is Attila Banath, 21 years of age, hungry with 10 men. And you see the two-shot success and a left hand upstairs from the Southport, wearing blue. Second bout of the tournament for both of these men. Banath outpointed Hungary's Sean Mari. A 4-1 split. Military championship bronze medalist from earlier this summer in Moscow. As Mari, as for Zakirov, he outpointed Spain's Martin Molina on a 4-1 split. The reigning national champion of Spain, the latest in his clutch of titles that he's taken over the years. Well, the action toe-to-toe -to -toe exclusively at the moment. But let me tell you, Zakirov excels in this territory. In Rosetto earlier this summer, he used this style. He likes to increase the disparity between himself and his opponents in terms of height because he's invariably the smaller boxer. And he boxes out of a crouch and he explodes upwards and he can keep a high tempo going seemingly all night long, very relaxed in the pocket. Although the tall, angular figure of Benath is holding his own in terms of infighting. But Zakirov really excels at this territory. He was absolutely sensational in taking that continental under-22 title in Rosetto. Here he is competing in his first world championships. And that's the exact same state of affairs for Benath, although he did compete in the World Youth Championships in his home country in Budapest three years ago. Uh, Benath trying to get it back to range, but look at the movement in the pocket from Zakirov. He then came back and scored with a good left hand to the body. And again, that gives you an idea as to how difficult this man is to tag cleanly, Zakirov. Rolled that shot there, scored with a good left hand to the body. When he tucks up in front of his opponent, it's almost impossible to see the man's torso. It's so compact to begin with, and then he concertinas it down further. Very difficult to touch the, catch the target cleanly, just such as that. Terrific work on the inside by Akhtem Zakirov. I happen to think he's done enough to take what was a competitive opening round. We have five scoring judges around the boxing ring using a 10-point must system. How will they see it? Because this man was accommodating Benath on the, excuse me, accommodating Zakirov on the inside, resulting in some exciting exchanges. So a 4-1 split in favor of Zakirov. The judge from Croatia preferring the work of the taller boxer wearing red, Attila Benath. So we're going to the second round then. Artem Zakirov taking the first on a 4-1 split. Judge number four from Croatia preferring the work of Attila Banath. Attila Banath, four national titles 
in his trophy cabinet. Participated in the 2019 European Games in Belarus. As for Zakirov, he took the national under-22 title in 2019, but was a silver medalist in the Russian National Championships, the senior level, earlier this year. But again, he's demonstrated his prowess, making an asset of what is often thought to be a disadvantage of a lack of inches. But look at that. When he crouches down, there is practically nothing to hit. And that is why Bernath is hitting air over the top of the head of the man in, man in blue. Possesses, as a possesses a terrific engine. And very composed. Whatever distance he is boxing at. Although invariably, it's short in mid-range, given his stature. So Benath momentarily turning southpaw, didn't really have any success as a burst of punches tags him above the belt line from Zakirov. Benath is putting forth a lot of effort here just to stay in this contest, keep it competitive. There a good right hand backs up Zakirov. And the two of them so keen to go toe to toe at close range that their heads are coming together. Zakirov switching to the orthodox stance momentarily. And again, that was a trait he demonstrated in Rosetto. Sometimes in his bid to change angles, there's a terrific three-shot salvo gets through, followed by a southpaw left cross and another southpaw left cross. Changing angles in front of his man, he often did switch stance, often mid-combination, making it even more, making him an even more confusing opponent to deal with. He really is making the most of what he's got. And that surely part of the art of sports in general and boxing in particular, doing what you want. Oh, good left uppercut landed out of the orthodox stances. Zakirov continues to switch in front of his man and a left hook causes Benath to stagger. Uh, Zakirov continuing to appear as fresh deep into this second round as he was at the opening belt. Very good portion of the round indeed from Zakirov. Operating as an orthodox boxer once again. Banath really committing himself to these backhanded assaults, not really finding the range. And Zakirov saying, well, I'm not quite sure what he said, but I think the sentiment was clear. These two men won't be exchanging birthday cards. In the heat of battle here at the Stark Arena, Banath giving it absolutely everything, but he's not, well, I don't think he won that round, but he's taken it on a 3-2 split. So going into the final round, we have four scorecards of 19 points apiece. Banath, his effort and industry rewarded a 3-2 split in favor of the man in red. I thought the work of the man in blue was more eye-catching, more impressive. So this contest has come down to the final three minutes. Zakirov taking the first on a 4-1 split. Benath taking the second, three scorecards to two. And so a whole host of scorecards tied at 19 points apiece mean that this contest will be determined by what transpires in front of us in this final three minute stanza. And Banath has come out refreshed and firing, operating as a southpaw boxer once again. There's the Kirov turning stance from orthodox to southpaw mid-combination, as we suggested he would do. Banath stealing a glance to his red corner. On the resumption, Banath scoring with a left jab. Good work to the body from Zakirov. The shots may have been a little bit low, but Banath so focused on his opponent, he's not even complaining. He's just staying in the pocket and engaging in exchanges with Zakirov, who is looking to increase his own punch output. And this is pretty even so far. Zakirov with a burst of body punches and an uppercut through the middle. He wrestles his man down to the canvas, Zakirov. It's his turn to shoot a glance in the direction of his corner to receive some instruction. Minute gone. In the round, good body shot landed with the backhand by Banath. Or who will be able to demonstrate their desire? Approaching the midpoint of the round. 
because I suspect the desire for both men is equal. Taking, uh, taking another step closer to the medal stages here. Championship medal is forever. And the prize money that's on offer will help these men secure the futures for themselves and their families. Considerable incentives on the line for generations who come after these boxers. Whose name will they find when they look in the record book, books of the podium finishes? Will it be either of these two men? They're bidding to keep themselves in contention by making it through to the quarterfinal stages. Minute to go as Akirov nods affirmatively in the direction of his corner. Another trade-off and a violent clash of heads as Zakirov comes upwards out of a crouch. Now who's holding on there? Zakirov spoken to about that breach of the rules. Left uppercut scored on the inside from Zakirov. Left hook, Banath comes back with a flurry of activity. I'm not sure how much of it was accurate. There he's over the top with a right hand. Zakirov sprints after his man, lands with a terrific right hand which jolts the man's head back and Banath appears desperately tired willing himself forwards continually commits to a backhand but he's off the mark and I think this is a rousing finish from Zakirov but remember I thought the man in blue did enough to take the second round and he conceded it on a 3-2 split the tied scorecards of 19 points apiece mean that it all came down to this and that surely is a decisive moment a left hook Landed solidly by Artem Zakirov. Sends Attila Banath to the floor. The mouthpiece dislodged. And so this a long count effectively. Well, if the contest was perceived to be in the balance, surely this has put it beyond doubt now. A left hook that landed beneath the ear of Attila Banath. And I know in Aiba boxing, knockdowns don't result in automatically in 10-8 rounds, as is the consensus in the professional code, but surely that's a punctuation point in favor of this man. I thought he did enough to edge the final round. Attila Banath was in it from opening bell to last competing, but I thought he did a pretty good job playing possum there and disguising his fatigue, hanging on desperately in the closing stages at times, but willing himself to let his hands go. I think the man in blue has done enough to take this. But what say the judges? Remember, we had tied scored cards of 19 points apiece after Zakirov took the first on a 4-1 split. And the man in red took the second on a 3-2 split. And there is confirmation of a unanimous points decision verdict for Aktem Zakirov taking it unanimously. Four scorecards returned of 29-28, re reflecting the fact that he took that final round across the board to edge it and break those scorecards that were scored, two through five at 19 points apiece. Attila Benath gave it absolutely everything. Terrific tournament for him, making it through to the round of 16, the 21-year-old from the Brecon. He was the equal of his man in so many regards, certainly desire, desire and punch output. But Aktam Zakirov managing to produce that moment of quality, the left hook in the closing stages to put the result of the contest beyond doubt. And it's Zakirov, the reigning under-22 European champion who goes through to the flyweight quarterfinals. We'll see him in the ring again tomorrow.